Thank you for coming back to the Soul Dojo Gaming Channel. I am Curtis Russell, and I'm accompanied by my good friend, Jamal Johnson. What is up, dog? Nothing much, man. Nothing much. It's good to be back. Dude, I, it is so awesome always to have you on the Soul Dojo, because I tell you all the time, you always have laid the groundwork for this channel, even though you're so humble. Like, no, I didn't. It was all you, but <laughs> I always give some credit to my boy but man we're talking about something today that uh is very close and dear to my heart probably to yours also electronic arts last year came out and said that you know after they did away with visceral games and did away basically with dead space mm -hmm. they started working on a star wars game and with visceral games actually and they ended up doing away with visceral and that star wars game and they said that basically saying that that game was too linear and that those kind of games which are quote unquote you know single player experiences are not popular anymore and i feel like with the recent news of spider-man and many other titles that that quote is completely wrong that single player games are not a dying breed single player games are not dead and we have a a lot of uh a lot of um facts to back that up and i want you to look at it from a business standpoint sales can definitely reflect the popularity of a video game genre right mm -hmm. of course so from what you see of ea getting dead space out the way getting visceral games single player star wars game out the way do you ever see them i guess i i want to say do you ever see them kind of focusing again on single player games um in terms of ea i guess them not i'll let's how to put this it's, it's kind of like and you talk about a business standpoint so uh for instance for me the store that i work for um and i'm a supervisor for they were bought out by albertson's which is a bigger company so we're unique to the way that we operate, meaning they didn't come down and necessarily change anything that we're doing, you know, except for minor things, but overall they let us be us. So to put that into perspective of EA, um, I don't necessarily see EA as much them focusing that route as much as it is if they do buy up, uh, you know, a developer that's already been focusing on single player games, a developer that they're not necessarily micromanaging. Um, it would seem as that they would go that route. But like I said, you're talking about they're just being uh, um, being a uh, developer that already is doing this and EA is just kind of like, okay, well, you know what? I want to bank off of them a little bit. I'll just let them do their thing and I'll just provide funding. Mm -hmm. So in that case, yeah and no. EA Sports itself, mm -hmm. a game that they're they're focusing on, that they're, they're going to make sure their developers are doing, I don't really see it happening. Um, but if it's talking about, you know, one of the developers that they're currently just funding, um, and publishing, I can definitely see it happening. Mm -hmm. Electronic Arts and Microsoft both haven't really learned this lesson. Of course, we can see that PlayStation has with the given news that Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man over expand of three days have sold 3.3 million copies, which actually edges the prior record that was 3.1 by uh, God of War. Now, remind you that these sales have been set over um three days only three days 3.3 .3 million yeah. um from a business standpoint playstation must be swimming in money yeah i think we talked about that earlier this this morning that playstation is getting the satisfaction that they want from their developers and their developers are getting the satisfaction that playstation is providing them with the money to create these amazing games now i feel like this is a strong now you can agree with me or disagree with me but i feel like this is a strong fact to back up our claim that single player games are not dying mm -hmm. that they sell this quick over a span of three days yeah they, i mean and not only top of that um you're looking at not only they're selling well but they're actually being highly rated because you know you have and I, I think we talked about this, uh, you know, off air uh, a couple of days ago, or if I'm not mistaken, maybe a week ago, is that you have games that do well in terms of numbers. In fact, we talked about, you know, for instance, FIFA, um, Madden. I mean, the list goes on. A lot of these common games, mm -hmm. Call of Duty, that does well in terms of numbers of sales 
But the biggest thing that they lack is the quality. I tell you, I value efficiency over anything, quality over quantity. So the thing about, you know, especially with Spider-Man is that not only are they selling a lot of copies, but people are really enjoying these, this game. Uh, IGN gave this a game an 8.7. Um, and I'm trying to find, and Metacritic gave the Spider-Man game an 87. And we already know how tough Metacritic is on a lot of games. Um, and I mean, they will literally give, you know, a game that everybody loves a 50 in a heartbeat and not think twice about it. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, we can definitely see, you know, where not only is the single player game done amazing over three days, but you're talking about a game that everybody loves. You can't really beat that. Yeah, exactly. And I want to kind of just stress that a lot of these facts and the sales numbers are coming within the last year or this mm -hmm. year. Uh, one game that you highly rated last year and you you voted for it to be your game of the year was Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, Horizon Zero Dawn hit uh, when it became a year old, actually hit 7.6 million, Ooh. which isn't too far off from Uncharted. Mm -hmm. And for it being a brand new IP, a brand new idea for PlayStation and Guerrilla Games, that is very high numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to say that, yeah, that that's basically broken a record for uh, a a new idea and i, I want to stress to people that are listening that this is coming from one side like one console mm -hmm. only on one console like if horizon zero dawn was sold on multiple yeah we'd probably be seeing those numbers jump up at least a couple more million yeah. um another game i want to kind of share out now this could be straight up the brand of it but altogether, legend of zelda breath of the wild sold 10 million copies my goodness, goodness. Yes, that is that is more in Star Wars Battlefront 2 sold well. Yeah. That is more than a game that was on both consoles. Wow, yeah, that is that is crazy. That's that is a single player game with a great and that was game of the year also. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when you look at these numbers and you look at what a uh, multiplayer driven, you could say that about Star Wars, maybe a multiplayer driven game mm -hmm. that's on both consoles. When you look at legend of zelda that's only on one mm -hmm. sold more than that mm -hmm. i don't think you can say that single player games are dying i don't think i just i just can't see it yeah. i just cannot see it and with the smaller games you have games like stardew valley that sold about 3.5 yeah. you have octopath traveler that's that's that did about a million within half a month mm -hmm. And I, I just don't see, Jake, where, where is this notion coming from? Like, where is this truly coming from, the notion that single-player games are dying? I think it's just one of those things that kind of, as the, and like I said, you're talking about, you know, we're, we're from a different age of, of, of gamers. And even in that different age, we were already, our mindset and thinking was a lot different when it came down to single-player and multiplayer games. Now, like I said, you know, me and you have played many of games together, so you would think, okay, well, we'd be on the multiplayer bandwagon, like, considering that pretty much most of the games we played together, or all of the games we played together have been multiplayer games. But I think the notion just comes from that, you know, ignorance, probably the biggest word, is that people just truly don't know. Like, they they simply just go off of what the mass majority says, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what's seen, in, and like I said, we've already talked about this, what the media presents to them. And so, therefore, okay, they're going to just take whatever the media presents. Oh, well, you know what? These games are doing well. But once you look at the numbers, you actually look at, like I said, the ratings. You see that. And and one thing that's fascinating that you said is that you're looking at all these, these single-player games that are console exclusive. Just think about that. Console exclusive games that are doing better than multiplayer games on a different array of consoles. I mean, completely mm -hmm. destroying them out of the water, you know, and this is just console exclusives. So you can imagine it that if this was even just on another console, it ain't even got to be on all the consoles. It ain't got to be on PC, but just on one other console, you know, the numbers would just be truly groundbreaking. It'd be a different conversation. I think the only reason they would say that is, like I said, because of ignorance, you know, and it's not on every console that everybody's playing. So, well, if you only have a person, we talked about this, if you only have a person that only plays Xbox and they're only an Xbox fanboy, there's no hate towards Xbox, but if you're just only an Xbox fanboy, or a PS4 fanboy, or a PC fanboy, or a Nintendo fanboy, and so on. Mm -hmm. They won't know. I think what you said, I think what you said literally is the bottom line. What people what people present to 
Well, we get up front from the major companies. Yeah. So when you look at Activision, mm-hmm. who took out the single player, you know, mode mm-hmm. for a battle royale mode, mm-hmm. and then you have EA saying this stuff about single player games. Yeah. And and you know, other situations I, I can't think of. I know there's more that are just like this, that are a lot like that. Mm-hmm. More people are starting to see, oh, well, maybe single player games are, you know, maybe they are dying because I'm not either people just don't know. Like you said, they just not looking at the sale numbers or they're just going off of what their friends are buying. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like people are surrounded by so much Fortnite, so much multiplayer games that they don't see like a lot of people are playing these single player games. <laughs> yeah. Online games might give you that longevity, yeah. but you need to have that ending for to to kind of fulfill you yeah. or give you a certain kind of satisfaction when you beat The Last of Us in games like that. You need that ending, you know what I'm saying? And you know what? And to touch on and two things before we close out here that you said, mm-hmm. you nailed it right on the head. It's just that, like, the moves, in fact, it coupled with, I said and you said, that the way that the media presented, but also, as you mentioned, you have these publishers, these developers, for one, these publishers that are forcing these developers to go a certain route with their games. So you're talking about, okay, well, taking out all these single player modes and just focusing or making, creating a game that's strictly only multiplayer. So it, it gives people the illusion, exactly like you said, giving the illusion that, okay, well, single player must be dying because all these developers are taking it out of their game. When that's just, that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, and second thought, if I can remember it here, you know, well, we're going to, the, but um, <laughs> the, and I, I think that's ultimately what it, what it, it comes down to. You're talking about, um, for instance, if we were to look at, in fact, that's exactly it. All of these multiplayer games, keep this in mind. Now people complain, well, there's no longevity to single player games. Now there's, you've already played a, many of single player games that have outlasted multiplayer games. Keep in mind this, most of these multiplayer games, are renewed each year, just like mm-hmm. a single player would be renewed either one year or two years or up to four years. So I don't really see what the problem is because if both games are being renewed each year, one to two years, then what's the difference? If I'm going to have to pay $60 for a brand new multiplayer game, then the longevity is out of the, you know you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, I get you. So, I mean, they're going to shut down these servers for these multiplayer games because they want you to buy the new stuff. Well, you don't have to worry about that with this brand new single player game. You already know, expected, okay, well, I'm going to pay for this, you know, and they're going to give me it all versus it's multiplayer game. They're going to eventually shut down stuff and start to make stuff funky to where it's no longer playable. Absolutely, man. That's a really, really good point. Uh, Jay, I appreciate you coming on this show. And I think we both came to the conclusion that single player games are here to stay and they're actually revolutionizing uh open world games actually uh and they're just getting better and from what we hear from red dead redemption 2 which is probably going to tear the walls down it's getting better and uh any anything else on single player games dying quote unquote not at all except for it ain't dying (laughs) (laughs) exactly thank you for coming back to the show make sure you guys like the video make sure you guys subscribe we're almost to 170 and thank you for you guys' constant support All right. And Jay, thank you for being back on the show. Oh, no problem, man. No problem. Thanks for having me. Talk to you soon.